uh, welcome to this uh, groundwater hydrology course and we will be uh, delivering this lecture number 31 in which I will discuss about saline water intrusion in aquifers. So, this is lecture number 31 and our main topic is saline water intrusion in aquifers and topics to be covered under this particular lecture class are occurrence Occurrence of saline water intrusion Second is features affecting saline water aquifers or coastal aquifers. And third one is Bodon Gaiben Harzberg principle. So, first thing, uh, what is this saline water intrusion? What is this saline water intrusion? Saline water intrusion is defined by uh, Fries and Cherry as the migration of salt water into fresh water aquifer under uh, influence of ground water development. So, this is basically uh, defined as defined as defined as migration of uh, migration of saline water into fresh water aquifer under the influence of groundwater development. So, uh, sometimes we use this groundwater word uh, as single word, uh, however, in this particular course we are using separate words ground water. So, what is this, uh, this influence of saline water uh, effect in fresh water aquifers. If you see our coastal aquifers, then uh, you will see that let us say we have one pumping well, which is pumping fresh water from or which is drawing fresh water from the coastal aquifers. Another one is the well which is already contaminated, contaminated 
So, if you see, this is our effective so we have groundwater table located here and this is our ground surface. So, this particular well is pumping fresh water and this one is pumping contaminated water. This is our sea surface or this is your sea and basically this is the position of salt water and this is our original interface between salt water and fresh water fresh water aquifer and this is our location for fresh ground water and this is salt water and this is our interface location. So, there will be exchange of fresh water and saline water in this region due to pumping there will be effect of there will be effect of uh, there will be effect of uh, pumping within our coastal aquifer and there will be lowering of ground water table or GWT in this region. So, this is basically a typical coastal aquifer and in which due to pumping effect there will be there will be contamination due to salt water and now we will try to discuss what are the features or the what are the um, uh, occurrence uh, what are the possible reasons for occurrence of saline water intrusion. There are three mechanisms which are responsible for occurrence of saline water intrusion. First one is reduction or reversal of gradient. General uh, perception is that there will be flow from uh, fresh water aquifer towards the sea, but when uh, we have higher pumping uh, case in the fresh water region, there will be reversal of gradient in that particular case. Second one is uh, this is basically destruction of
natural barriers. Destruction of natural barriers, this is another important reason for saline water intrusion. What are these barriers? Maybe uh, uh, we can say uh, our Sundarban region, we have mangroves and uh, destruction of mangroves can cause saline water intrusion in this coastal region. Third one is totally human intervention and this is due to dumping of uh, saline waste. This is due to saline waste. saline waste and due to this saline waste, uh, there uh, it can cause inland salinity or near the region of the coastal aquifer, it can cause some kind of uh, extra effect of salinity near uh, coastal aquifers. So, now we will try to figure out the features which are affecting saline water aquifers or coastal aquifers, saline water aquifers or coastal aquifers. So, first one we can say this is due to human activities. human activities. What are these human activities? First one, we can say that ground water extraction. Second one is mining of gas and oil. Second one uh, and is mining of gas and oil. Third one is lowering of ground water table. And fourth one, we can say that human saline wastes. So, what is this ground water extraction? What is this ground water extraction? Let us say that we have some city well filled which is drawing water from the nearby coastal aquifer and this is our ocean and this is saline ground water and we can denote this thing as fresh ground water. So, what is happening due to uh, this is our G s or ground surface and 
this is again ground water table. What happens? Due to constant pumping from city well field, there will be a gradual movement of this interface towards this wells and finally, if this well uh, these wells draw significant amount of water from this fresh water aquifers, it can cause a saline water intrusion in ground water aquifer. So, we can say that pumping is a responsible uh, point for uh, saline water intrusion or uh, a, an important feature for uh, this effect in fresh water aquifer for coastal, uh, coastal regions. Second one, uh, uh, we talked about this mining uh, gas and oil. So, most of the cases we see that mining operations uh, are usually carried out near coastal regions that can affect uh, significantly our fresh ground water aquifers. Uh, third one is lowering of ground water table, there may be uh, different causes due to which they, there can be lowering of lowering of ground water table. And uh, another thing is that uh, human saline waste that can also cause uh, saline water intrusion in coastal aquifers. So, if we uh, distinctly see different things, so for unconfined and confined aquifers, for unconfined aquifers, we can have different situations. First one is your bait condition, which is impervious in nature, then this is sea level and natural recharge or natural recharge is occurring from the top. This is our ground water table or GWT, this is our GS or ground surface. So, this is common thing that there will be movement of water from fresh water fresh water aquifer and this is basically our uh, this is basically our interface location second case uh, if we have some kind of confined uh, aquifer situation this is again impervious this is our sea level
another impervious region so this is the location of interface this is for unconfined and this is for confined aquifers again this is ground water table and this is ground surface we have fresh water here so these are two uh, examples uh, for interface movement in confined and unconfined aquifers and we can say that this is our uh, piezometric surface piezometric surface for unconfined uh, confined aquifers another situation we can have that is island situation that is for island aquifers fresh water interestingly for island aquifers we have a different setting in which uh, on the top we have fresh water and from the bottom we have this saline water and this is our normal ground water table and in islands only a uh, source of water or fresh water is natural recharge natural recharge is the only source of water so these are uh, for unconfined confined and for island aquifers uh in these cases we have considered a sharp interface between our fresh water and sea water or uh, ocean water in reality this sharp interface uh, doesn't exist this is basically our uh, one kind of approximation to real world problem uh, what exists in reality is some kind of diffuse interface in fresh water we have less density and in case of sea water we have high density so uh, there exists some kind of density gradient between this uh, fresh water to sea water region and in between we will have some kind of diffuse uh, region or diffuse interface uh, position so uh, we can say this region as transition zone transition zone and this uh, existence of transition zone is due to molecular diffusion and dispersion process that occurs during mixing of sea water and fresh water so uh, what is this thing 
So, like previous figure, we will draw same So, this is our C region and this is our phreatic surface this is fresh water and this is saline water. In between there exists something that is called transition zone. Thus, density of uh, fluid within this transition zone is in between saline water and fresh water. So, next thing uh, or next point uh, for this features affecting our saline aquifers is coastal zone effect. In coastal zone effects, we have coastal uh, coastal erosion process, next is shoreline retreat. and tidal effect. What is this coastal erosion? Uh, due to uh, due to decrease in the number of the mangrove trees uh, in this coastal regions uh, uh, or uh, we can say this coconut trees, there is uh, some kind of coastal erosion occurs in the coastal uh, shoreline. And due to that, a coastal uh, erosion is one important thing that affects our saline uh, water intrusion in coastal aquifers. Next one is this shoreline retreat. Shoreline retreat is a common problem and one example of this is uh, Cape Hatteras, uh, this lighthouse in US that has uh, been shifted uh, uh, towards inland uh, somewhat uh, 2870 feet, uh, 200 and, uh, 200 and, uh, 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 2870 feet inland due to this shoreline retreat effect. And third one is tidal effect, tidal effect or wave effect. This tidal effect or wave effect is uh, generally generated uh, due to water waves and uh, during tsunami or high water wave or natural tidal fluctuations, there will be some kind of effect within the coastal aquifers. So, what are the influencing things uh, during this process? So, this is again our ground water table and this is our land region 
So, land region uh, we have this overland flow. And from ocean, we can have some kind of wavy effect, wavy effect due to this tides. And for this fresh water thing, next we have some kind of let us say some kind of acquired region. And finally, this is base some kind of impermeable base. This is our confined aquifer and fresh water comes from some upstream side. This is our acquired this is our base. So, there will be intrusion of brackish water and there will be interaction between fresh water and this brackish water. and flow is generally towards C. So, what are the other things we have? Uh, if we denote C as convection, H as hydraulic head, T as tidal pumping and W as wave setup, then uh, we can show that uh, there will be discharge from the fresh water towards the sea due to these four components, these four components. One is directly this is wave setup, next one is due to hydraulic head and we have this tidal effect which is occurring near to uh, this interface between aquifer and sea and our convection process that occurs in this brackish brackish water or in this region brackish water region and also some kind of tidal pumping setup that occurs in this region. Similarly, for confined aquifer this is our unconfined aquifer and this is our confined one. So, in this brackish region again we have convection which dominates the flow conditions and tidal thing which dominates the flow condition near brackish region and this is governed by the hydraulic head.
head. So, next feature that is affecting saline water intrusion is sea level rise or rise in sea level. Uh, this particular point is somewhat debatable uh, point because uh, some people have negated the effect of sea level rise uh, for sea water intrusion in coastal aquifers. But uh, sea level rise uh, significantly affects the uh, um, salt water intrusion near to coast, only near to coast. Uh, its effect may not be uh, that much inwards or uh, landwards region, but it is uh, uh, surely uh, affects the region which is near to shoreline. And what are the sub points under this? This is one is global warming which affects sea level rise and it is uh, indirectly affecting salt water intrusion. Next is land subsidence. Due to land subsidence, there may be sea level rise and also due to some kind of tectonic uplift. Due to some tectonic uplift, there can be uh, rise in sea level. So, uh, next point is changes in hydrological or geological regime. Hydrological or geological regime. Uh, individual points we can discuss under this thing is changes in natural recharge changes in natural recharge next is uh, evaporation evaporation so what is the effect of uh, changes in natural recharge there may be reduction uh, reduction in uh, rainfall pattern or increase in rainfall pattern that can affect our sea level uh, this uh, salt water intrusion next one is evaporation due to evaporation uh, water uh, there may be a concentrated uh, amount of salt may be available near the creeks or any other region near to the coastal aquifers that can cause uh, salt water intrusion. And third one we can discuss that is sea water entered aquifers during past uh, geologic time. So, uh, sea water that, is, that has already entered in the lower aquifers or deeper aquifers during past geologic time that can significantly uh, affect uh, our inland salinity part inland salinity or near to the coast also. Sometimes what happens uh, due to different kind of stratification your uh, fresh water may be at the lower strata compared to uh, 
the sea water which is at the uh, topmost uh, strata uh, due to some effect or we can have situations where this sea water uh, is located in the deeper aquifers due to some geological event in the past. And uh, last point under this particular thing is effect of river and estuaries, river and estuaries. One point we can say that is backwater effect, salinity of surface water and final thing is seepage. So, what is this backwater effect? Due to uh, this uh, rivers which are connected to the sea, there may be backwater effect and due to uh, tidal variation, uh, it can uh, uh, affect a significant portion of the river and in turn this salinity of surface water can cause uh, saline water intrusion in coastal aquifers uh, or inland aquifers along uh, with uh, other effects like heavy extraction or heavy pumping from this particular uh, aquifer. And seepage is another reason for saline water intrusion. So, if we summarize uh, this uh, features that are affecting our uh, saline water intrusion, then uh, what are the effects or problems due to this saline water intrusion. First one is loss of drinking water, loss of drinking water. Next, due to loss of drinking water, uh, there will be a problem in uh, related to habitat. Next is increase in soil salinity. Due to increase in soil salinity, there may be problem related to uh, agriculture. Third one is possible relocation of habitants, possible relocation of habitants. This is another uh, important point. So, on the whole, serious uh, consequences on environment ecology and economy of that region. So, <coughs> sorry, uh, these are the effects uh, due to or these are the problems due to uh, saline water intrusion in aquifers. So, next point we will discuss about this burden Gaibin 
Herzberg principle. So, this is the most simple approximation of the interface for modeling the saline water intrusion in coastal aquifers. So, what are the inherent assumption for this particular principle? First one, assumptions. First one is that the aquifer is uh, homogeneous. Next one is hydrodynamic dispersion is negligible. Third one is that a vertical, uh, the third one is that saline water, saline ground water is at rest, saline ground water is at rest. So, to derive this thing uh, we can use, uh, we can use our uh, hydrostatic principles of fluid mechanics and we can directly employ those uh, uh, pressure related relationships for derivation of burden. Gaiben Herzberg principle. So, uh, first we can sketch our geometry. So, that is this is our ocean. and we have interface like this and this is our impermeable base impermeable base for this problem. This is ground surface, this is ground water table and this particular location we have our z axis, this is our x axis. So, this depth from the sea level we can denote it as x y which is a function of x and y. Again, this depth of interface, this is as x y and from the ocean surface to our uh, ground water table, we have h f depth. So, uh, this is our interface and this is our salt water and this is the location of toe and we have impermeable
impermeable bottom. So, from this one we can write that H s uh, H s equals to rho s g plus z and H f equals to p rho f g by z where rho s is the density of salt water and rho f is the density of fresh water. So, uh, during dynamic equilibrium there should be pressure continuity at the interface. So, what we can do? We can equate the pressure from these two equations and if we equate the pressure from these two equations, we can directly write H f rho s H s plus rho s minus f. So, what is this? This is calculated uh, this is calculated from the uh, x axis and this is the depth of this location. So, basically our function is minus z. So, we have replaced this minus z with this thing. Now, uh, if we equate these equations, then we will finally get rho f by rho s minus rho f into h f h s rho s rho f and h s. Guyben, Hausberg, they have further simplified that the salt water is stagnant. Salt water is stagnant, thus uh, we can directly use hydrostatic principles and rho s g, we can directly write it. So, further from our previous equation, we can write that rho f by rho s minus rho f into h f. If we consider our rho f equals to 1 gram per centimeter cube and rho s as 1.025 gram per centimeter cube, then we will see that this value is approximately 40 times h f. So, we can say that for every meter of fresh water above mean sea level, the thickness of the fresh water lengths resting on salt water is about 40 meters. So, we can see that for every meter of fresh water above mean sea level, the thickness of fresh water lengths resting on salt water is about 40 meters. And for this Guyben Herzberg principle, uh, it is mandatory that you should have some depth above uh, 
mean sea level. Otherwise, there will be reversal of flow from this region. So, uh, uh, we can say that uh, this is one important uh, historical development for saline water intrusion, uh, saline water intrusion measurement and it depends on sharp interface uh, principle. So, uh, today's lecture uh, we are concluding with this Guyben Herzberg principle. Next uh, lecture we will discuss the application of Guyben Herzberg principle for identification of uh, salt water intrusion in coastal region. Thank you.